Right now, cloudy skies above Fenway Park. The rain has departed. It started about uh, 50 minutes late tonight as Stephen Wright and the Red Sox take the field tonight. As they do, let's check out the Chicago White Sox starting line brought to you by New England Chevy dealers. Adam Eaton leads it off in center field with Tyler Saladino at third base. Melky Cabrera is in left field. Jose Abreu at first base got a nine-game hitting streak. It is Adam LaRoche, the DH, with Alexei Ramirez at shortstop. J.B. Shuck, who started the first game of the series in center, starts in right tonight. Tyler Flowers does the catching batting eighth, and Carlos Sanchez has had a good series, bats ninth at second base. Red Sox starting pitcher presented by your local New England Audi dealers. 14th appearance, seventh start of the year for Stephen Wright. Comes in individually at 3-4 and four with a 4.78 earned run average. 31 strikeouts, 18 walks, and opponents hitting at 252 against him. Did lose last time out against the Tigers, going four and a third, giving up five hits. Four runs, only two of the four runs were earned. The Red Sox defense is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. They are 10th in the American League with 61 errors in 102 games. Pablo Sandoval will be at third base. Xander Bogots the shortstop. Brock Holt at second. Mike Napoli the first baseman. Left to right, Hanley Ramirez, Jackie Bradley Jr., and Ruzde Castillo. And Blake Swihart doing the catching for Stephen Wright. Tonight's umpires are brought to you by Buick. Experience a new Buick lineup during this year's Sign and Drive. See your local Buick dealer today. Well, home plate is Bill Miller, Sean Barber at first base, Doug Eddings at second base, and Adrian Johnson, the umpire at third. Where available, this telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your television remote. Enjoy the game. When it's no chase, amigos. 78 degrees, the temperature to start the ball game. Breeze out to right at 9 miles per hour and the forecast for isolated thunderstorms throughout the night. As Stephen Wright ready here to work to Adam Eaton to get this ball game started. And right now, right now trying to get the attention of the dugout. Some spikes were left out there. That takes care of that. And Stephen Wright ready to work here to Adam Eaton. And the Red Sox certainly looking to get off to a better start tonight and try to prevent the White Sox from scoring in the top of the first inning. They have been red hot in this series, and it starts with this guy, Adam Eaton. 269 homers, 25 runs batted in. And the first pitch of the ball game misses for ball one. Eaton, Saladino, and Cabrera to bat in the inning. And White Sox outscoring. Well, it's 16 to nothing. In this first inning, last night able to come up with five runs. In the first three innings of last night's action, Red Sox trailed the 1.6 to nothing. Now Stephen Wright goes to the fastball there on a 2-0 count to get his first strike of the game. Line to right, and it gets in for a hit. Rusne Castillo over to play it, sliding to grab it. Fires it in and holds Eaton to a single. Throw goes behind him, and Eaton back to the bag. Nice play by Rusne Castillo to get over there as quickly as he could. Yeah, we've been talking all series how the Red Sox have really been shifted to the opposite field against Eaton. Well, not as much tonight with the knuckleball pitcher on the mound, and that gave Rusne Castillo a chance to get over there and make that play. If this was hit off a conventional style pitcher, the defense would not have been the same, and Eaton might still be running. So now for Eaton, an eight game hitting streak at 419, 13 for his last 31. Here's Tyler Saladino, and that one has him moving backwards. Little surprise when you're up there looking for a knuckleball and instead you get a fastball up under the chin. Throw the first and back to the bag is Eaton. Seven steals on the season for Eaton. He has been caught four times. In their first strike, and it evens at one and one. It seems like all the White Sox have had good series. Saladino down there at third base, starting all four games, and now 16. But nobody's been hotter than this guy, Milky Cabrera, waiting on deck. 
Throw to first and Eaton crosses over to get back to the bag. In there for strike two. Stephen Wright was actually up in the ball game last night in the first inning in relief, but uh, did not come into the ball game. Was not needed as it turned out. As that knuckleball pushing it off the fingers. And remember last time out, Swihart had a very difficult time with Stephen Wright. Ended up with four pass balls in that game. Yeah, it, was, it felt bad for him behind the plate. He just had one of those nights where it was very tough to handle him. In there for strike three right at the bottom of the zone. Saladino didn't think so, but he takes with him for a strike out of the night for Stephen Wright. Well, I think he's more surprised than anything that he didn't get a knuckleball in that situation. He got a fastball. Knee high from Stephen Wright. Wright had four strikeouts in his last outing. Picks up his first of this. And Saladino thought that ball was too low, but looked like a good pitch. One down runner at first for Melky Cabrera. Two eighty four six homers and forty eight runs batted in for Cabrera. Hitting three eighty three. Since June the twenty first. Swing and a miss on that pitch. Tonight's key matchup brought to you by Honda. Start something special with a great deal on a Honda. Melky Cabrera in the series, nine for 16. Five doubles, a triple, three RBIs against the Red Sox in the first three games of this series. We'll try to contain him tonight as a big hack there, and it's one and two. Good action on this knuckleball right here as it kind of dips right at the end. You see it uh, dipping, and on top of it is Melky Cabrera. That's a good night to have Tim Wakefield back in the studio tonight analyzing the knuckleball of Stephen Wright. Swing and a miss, and Cabrera strikes out back to back case for Stephen Wright. Two down. Back to the knuckleball again for Wright this time, and it starts to move away. As you can see right there from Melky Cabrera. So two down, Eaton at first base. Jose Abreu getting settled in. Two ninety six, sixteen homers, and fifty seven runs batted in for Abreu. Nine game hitting streak coming into tonight's game. We we're talking about Tim Wakefield. Hey, yesterday out in the bullpen, Wakefield speaking with Stephen Wright, Kyle Willis. Must feel like a brother, you know, when you have somebody there that can really understand what you're dealing with. And certainly Wakefield had help in his day and, and now passing that along to a guy like Stephen Wright. Very small fraternity. Eaton got a base hit to begin the inning, still at first base with two down in the inning. And a 1 1 to Abreu. In the air to right center field, struck pretty well. Back goes Bradley Jr. at the wall. It is gone into the bullpen. 17th home run of the year for Jose Abreu. And the White Sox continue scoring in the first inning. Tonight they take a 2 0 lead. That goes to show you how strong Abreu is. I mean, this knuckleball is down in the zone, and he's going to inside out it. Look at that pitch where it's located down in middle in, and he insides out the swing all the way to the Red Sox bullpen. That's a strong man right there to do that.
So Chicago jumping out to the 2 0 advantage. Now a 10 game hitting streak for Brayu. Over 400. Now LaRoche taking strike one right at the top of the zone. It was now 11 home runs given up by Wright. And 53 and a third innings pitched. Give up the single to Eden back to back strikeouts of Saladino and Cabrera before the home run by Abreu. Now a drive to right as Castillo back onto the track to make the catch. That ends the inning. A two run shot for Abreu as the White Sox on top 2 0. Up in there, lineup is brought to you by your Eastern Hyundai dealers. Leading it off and at second base, Brock Holt with Xander Bogart at shortstop batting second. Hanley Ramirez in left field. David Ortiz the DH with Mike Napoli at first base. Ruzne Castillo in right. Pablo Sandoval at third base, bat seventh. Blake Swihart does the catching eighth, and Jackie Bradley Jr. in center field, ninth. And Brock Holt standing in to lead it off. And Holt takes strike one. White Sox starting pitcher presented by New England Nissan dealers. Chris Sale making his 20th start of the year, 9 and 5, with a nifty 2.85 earned run average. Seven games, two starts against the Red Sox, a 0.89 ERA. Red Sox hitting at 116 against him. Now we talked in the open about him. I mean, he's nasty with his fastball slider and changeup, and the fastball will be 95 plus for a lot of the night. Incredible control, too, for a guy that throws as hot as he does. Here is strike three. Holt didn't think so. No, Brock Holt saying he doesn't need that kind of help with his stuff. The breaking ball looked like it stayed inside that time, but called the third strike. And if his plate's going to be that big tonight. It's going to be a long night for Red Sox hitters. Now one down here in the first inning as Xander Bogart stands in. Right back off sale. It kicks out to short. Ramirez will not have a play. So a hot shot by Xander Bogart's right back at sale. That looked like it got him below the waist. And I think he's okay. 
Obviously, they're going to come out and check on Sale. But it looked like it got him on the leg. Line shot by Bogart, so that carried away toward third base. Well, we get a chance. Let's take a look at the White Sox defense, and it's brought to you by DraftKings. They are 12th in the American League, 63 errors on the season. Carlos Saladino will be at third base. Alexi Ramirez, the shortstop. Carlos Sanchez, the second. Jose Abreu, the first baseman. Left to right, Melky Cabrera. Adam Eaton and J.D. Chuck. Tyler Flowers doing the catching for sale. Try a couple warm-up tosses here. Make sure that he is all right. And he says he's good to go. Not a lot to him. He, at least weight wise, he is six foot six. Listed 160 pounds, though. And Sale, certainly a guy you kind of. Mentioned Randy Johnson as a guy that reminded you a little bit of him. Not quite the height, but uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the same uh, to me. You know, tall guy, lanky, yep. throws very hard. Good breaking ball. Ready to deal with Hanley Ramirez. One out, runner at first. Check on first, and back to the bag is Bogarts. So that was a first round pick, 13th overall in 2010. Last year, a 13 game winner, 13 and 4, as Ramirez fouls it off. No swings he's had in any season, 17 wins, 17 and 8 for the White Sox back in 2012. Lead at first for Xander Bogarts. As Ramirez ducks back out of the way at 97. David Ortiz waiting on deck. Red Sox batting here in the bottom of the first inning. Trailing two to nothing. Look at the numbers in the last eight road starts for sale. That was a change up that time and the change up was 87 miles an hour. Swing and a miss, and Ramirez strikes out second K for sale. Two down. Now yeah, we talked about him being a strikeout pitcher twice this season. He has struck out 14 in a game. One time against Houston, and one time against the Texas Rangers. Two strikeouts so far in the game tonight. By the way, the Red Sox are the second toughest team in the American League to strike out. See the breakdown. More change jumps than the sliders. And a lot of fastballs. Two down here in the first inning. David Ortiz at 240, 20 homers and 56 runs batted in. Shift here for the White Sox on the right side against Ortiz. Ortiz two for ten in his career against Sale. Xander Bogart's held on by Jose Abreu at first base. Two down here in the bottom of the first inning. And again, they pinch that outfield again on Ortiz with a shift in the infield. David ducking back out of the way, but the recipient of strike two. So now you see the left field, the right field, the very close to the center fielder, and giving Ortiz both the left field line and the right field line. And it's actually paid off for him in this series. Even thought about it, lays off. Started the season kind of slowly against lefties and has picked it up lately. And certainly not facing your average lefty tonight. 
Good job there checking his swing also very tough for a guy like Ortiz a power hitter to check his swing. One it goes Ortiz takes it low and the throw is going to be not in time stolen base for Bogarts. Tag was near the head in the helmet area. Very good jump at first base by Bogarts and you know, something he picked off picked up off Salo just going on the first move but he had an excellent jump and no chance at all for Flowers to get him even though he made a very good throw to second base. Well, the fourth stolen base against Sale this year. And Xander Bogart's in a scoring position with two down. David with a count of two and two. In the dirt gets away from Flowers. Bogart's will take third base. That tries to change up that time to Ortiz and misses badly away. Flowers trying to block the ball, but he can't do it. And Bogarts moves up a bag to third base. Wild pitch is set to Chris Sale. Allowing Bogarts to take third. Ortiz through the shift into right field down towards the corner. Run will score. Bogarts from third base. Big Poppy headed for second. Shuck will get it back in. It's an RBI double. And the Red Sox are on the board. It's now two to one in Chicago. But David really turned that fastball around quickly. 95 on the fastball. And it stays inside. Ortiz opening up a little bit sooner than he normally would. And hooks it right by Abreu at first base. Now we mentioned the pinch outfield. Long way to go for Shuck to get that one. Ortiz ends up at second base. Red Sox grab a run. Ortiz picks up his 57th RBI of the season. David now five for his last eight with runners in scoring position. Mike Napoli stands in and takes strike one. Able to get his 12th home run of the year last night here against the White Sox. It's been a good second half for Napoli. In the 12 home runs go along with 37 RBIs and 210 average for Napoli. That's fifth again tonight for the Red Sox. Off balance there on that swing. One and two. It's tough to gear up for a fastball as hard as Sale throws it and then have to adjust to that slider. A lot of bite on that last slider going down and in on Napoli. Check swing. Did he go? No, says Sean Barber, first base umpire. Almost the identical pitch right there. We'll take a look at the last two breaking balls from Sale to Napoli. The first one, Napoli takes a swing at. So he tries to come back with the exact same pitch. This time, Napoli taking. Now he strikes out, and that'll end the first inning. But the Red Sox get a run. It's two to one, Chicago at the end of one.
call you and get a personal voicemail from Dustin Pedroia instead. Visit RedSox.com slash picnic for amazing player auction experiences, including Sandra Bogarts, David Ortiz, Clay Buckholz, and more. All proceeds benefit the Red Sox Foundation. Now Dustin Pedroia on the bench, on the DL, one of the Red Sox, and watching right now as the White Sox come to bat in the second inning. Chicago on top two to one. Alexei Ramirez, J.B. Shuck, and Tyler Flowers here in the second inning. Stephen Wright giving up a two-run home run to Jose Abreu in the first inning through 21st inning pitches. You should actually be part of that to a way you can have a message for fans, Don. You can have some of your classics in there, you know? The 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> Thank you for calling as that strike three. Let's say Ramirez. Third strikeout for Wright, and Ramirez walks away shaking his head. Now, I didn't like the call, but it looked like the, the knuckleball broke back in on the corner. Let's take another look on the Amica pit zone. Some late movement uh, back on the corner, it looked like. Ramirez didn't think so, but I think that's a good call. One down here in the second inning for J.B. Shuck. I really do think, though, that you should record for Nesson mm -hmm. the welcome to Nesson, you know, you have reached. For the phone system? Yes. The Nesson? Yes. <laughs> Hello, you have reached. Hello, thank you for calling Nesson. Absolutely. I mean, you've got to do that for Nesson. <laughs> it's classic. Let's see what you can do. Well, that's a, well, it's a thought. It's a classic. It's a thought. This is Nesson. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll work on it. See what we can do. I, I know some people there. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> I, I absolutely 100% think that you should answer the phones at Nesson. You really should. It's, it's, thank you for calling Nesson. <laughs> <laughs> if you know the party that you'd like to talk to at Nesson, there's a pop up foul off to the left out of play. Dial one. <laughs> Dial one for Jerry Remy from Nesson. <laughs> I mean, that would be. That you would think be, I should do that in place of this? Is that what you're saying? No, you no, 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 no. Add it to this. I think. I, I mean, to have the voice, the play the by morning. play voice, answering the phone at Nesson to me would be absolutely perfect. And the way you say it is the best. So this popped up foul off to the left. I mean, there's no question when you call there. You know. You know. You've called Nesson. <laughs> Knuckleball ball misses high and it's two and two. It is Shuck now. Flower is next. White Sox batting here at the top of the second. We got started about 50 minutes late tonight as the rain came through here in Boston and did cool it off here a little bit humidity wise at the ballpark. That's down 85% now. Humidity. To left, and Ramirez puts it away for out number two. I want to remind you to tune in August 18th and 19th to Nesson for coverage of the WEI Nesson Jimmy Fund Telethon presented by Arbella Insurance Foundation. Arbella Insurance Foundation here for the Jimmy Fund, here for good. Two down in the second inning brings up Tyler Flowers. 221, seven homers and 27 runs batted in. Strike over the outside corner. Flowers trying to hold up one around, 0 2. Right with two strikeouts in the first start of this inning with a strikeout of Ramirez. Rolls it over foul. It'll stay foul. Well, 
Last game of this four game series between the Red Sox and the White Sox. Well, the Tampa Bay Rays come to town. White Sox be headed home tonight after the ball game. Open up a homestand tomorrow night in U.S. Cellular Field in Chicago. No two to Flowers. A little bit high, actually a lot high. Trying to get their first four game sweep here at Fenway since 1927. Close pitch, but to uh, call the ball. In the air down the left field line on the move is Bogarts and Sandoval. Xander by the stands makes the catch. That'll end the top of the second inning, done with an inning and a half, two to one, Chicago. Should the trade deadline be extended past July 31st? Text one for yes, text two for no. Text your answer to 536 Message and data rates may apply. One message per vote. Visit Nesson.com slash terms for terms and conditions and privacy policy. I would say no. I think it just stay right where it is. I think so, yeah. Yeah. I think the consideration and what people are thinking about now is that there are more teams in it right now than there ever have been before because they implemented the second wild card and maybe they should wait a while longer to figure out who's really in it and who's really should be a buyer who should be a seller. I think that's the thinking. Could I talk you into maybe September first and then nobody Ooh. then after that you can't like pick up anybody on options no, or any of the no that waiver stuff. wire deals or no, anything like that. that. Yeah. That seems pretty tight. I also think it's good to have that player for what works out to be two months. I mean, I, you know, I, I think I like where it is. To third, Saladino dives, gets up, slings it to first, and Abreu on a very good stretch digs it out of the dirt for out number one. Nice play. He's made some very good scoops over there at first base. Yeah, he has. And, you know, he's, I wouldn't call him an above average first baseman, but he's made some nice picks uh, in this series against the Red Sox. Saladino hustling to get that ball to first base, and one hops it, Abreu able to make it nice and clean over there at first. That ball hit the heel of his glove. Fortunately, right there on his hand where he could pick it up and throw it. And there's Abreu at the other end. Very nice. Pablo Sandoval driving it foul up to the grandstand area. Left last night's game with dehydration. 
262 eight homers 34 runs batted in. A lot of talk today in John Farrell's press conference about where he plays at third base and how shallow he plays and John was talking about how he doesn't like coming in all that much so he plays pretty shallow at third base as he strikes out here fourth strikeout already for sale and there are two outs a sale I mean excuse me Sandoval in his career was 0 for 5 I imagine that was his right handed hitter against uh, sale now he's going to face him from the left side and the first time up strikes him out. So Sale already with four strikeouts in the ball game tonight. Fastball up and away from Sandoval. Cannot check the swing. Goes around. Two down in the inning for Blake Swihart. Uh, 232 with a home run. 12 runs batted in. Now, if you do play as shallow as Sandoval does, a lot of times, I mean, you already think about the hot corner being the hot corner, and it's tough to react, but when you're even closer, it's even harder. And that was some of the questions coming to John Farrell today about his positioning where he's at. John said basically he's used to playing shallow, used to people bunting in the, the National League a lot more than they do in the American League, even with two outs. I noticed uh, that, you know, watching him in the playoffs at World Series, that uh, that's a position uh, where he's very comfortable at yes. in close at third base. And so, I mean, if that's where you're comfortable, that's where you play. I guess the question is, has it cost the Red Sox uh, because he's so close on some of those? It, it may have on a couple of occasions, but, you know, for the most part, balls sit down between the third baseman and the third base line. They usually line shots. They're very seldom are they slow ground balls. Well, two down here in the second inning. It's been tough to watch for John Farrell the last three games, especially against this White Sox team. And this is in the left field for Blake Swihart. Red Sox getting their third hit. Swihart thinking two, but he will be very out. Getting it back in quickly. Melky Cabrera and Swihart thrown out at second base. Through two, two to one, Chicago. White Sox have the lead over the Red Sox. Welcome in Alex Spear, the Boston Globe. And Alex, uh, today uh, we find out about Daniel Nava, a guy who hit uh, 303 for the Red Sox in 2013, part of their world championship. What was an incredible year for him as it worked out, now designated for assignment. It's a, a kind of incredible thing to see how uh, to see how quickly, well, really to reflect on how perfectly all those pieces fit together in 2013. Uh, you kind of realize the, the good fortune that has to go into any kind of run like that. There have to be a number of those kinds of performances with guys surpassing 
what would have been reasonable expectations entering that season uh, to become just standout contributors, whether, you know, a kind of Mark Bellhorn type from 2004 or Nava in 2013 being another example. But um, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's a, it's a little bit melancholy because what he did to get to that point, you know, is, is so extraordinary with the Red Sox purchasing his rights out of the Indy League for a buck and him kind of fighting his way as an older guy, level by level through the minor league system, having been designated for assignment early in his Red Sox career, uh, and having worked his way back. So um, it, it sounds like there might be some interest on the market in terms, of, uh, in terms of teams that are in contention, adding Nava as a potential role player for them down the stretch. Um, and you hope that someone like him gets more opportunities uh, because he's worked so hard to get the ones that he's already had. Alex, uh, the moves that have been made so far by teams, any any of them surprised you? Did the Toronto move surprise you with the price? Oh, yeah. I think yeah. that for Toronto to go for it in that position of being a couple games out in the wild card, that's that's pretty gutsy uh, because you're investing, really, you're, you're kind of stacking up all of your future starting pitching. You gave up a bunch of it in order to get Tulowitzki, uh, which makes sense. He's a superstar, right? So And he's a controllable one who we have for a long time. But David Price, they're taking their best pitching prospect in Daniel Norris, the guy who would best be positioned to help them next year and saying, OK, you know, chips are on the table. Let's go for it this year, even when they're on the outside looking in for that one game wild card playoff. That is that's bold. Can you understand it, though, because they all they've often been criticized for not doing anything. Absolutely. You know, and if you look at that team, if they're able to line up price for a one game playoff and then all and then get through it and have a chance in uh, have a chance to let their bats do some damage, uh, then that's that's something serious. They've they've made the, a lot of times in past years. You're absolutely right. They had been criticized for kind of getting to the doorstep and not pushing beyond it. In this case, you know, in this case, they are really obviously asserting themselves. And frankly, this has been a wild trade deadline so far. The, the magnitude of the names that we've seen moving already between, you know, with guys like Tulowitzki, who may be the biggest position player to move since, I don't know, maybe Manny in 2008. Uh, and then beyond that, to see a David Price move, a Scott Kazmir, a Carlos Gomez already. There are a lot of names, and it's, you know, you, you kind of look around at the Red Sox level of relative, you know, inactivity, the fact that, you know, they're, they're in this kind of sell position, but without having the major landmark pieces to sell that they did last year. And it's kind of like, oh, the, the kind of fun of the trade deadline hasn't really been accessible to them this year. Up to a couple of strikeouts, a base hit here for Tyler Saladino. And there's a runner aboard with two down, Alex Spear from the Boston Globe. But joining us, Alex, what do you think about uh, the Red Sox that could go, do you think, in the next 24 hours? Well, it's going to be an interesting one because someone like Mike Napoli, you can see how, you know, as, as much as he's heating up with the start of the second half, and he's a great second half performer historically, someone who's hitting very well once again against left-handed pitchers this year, how he could fit onto a, uh, onto a team that's in contention. But at the same time, the market for him hasn't really advanced as quickly as perhaps we might have expected. He's the type of guy who could also be moved in August, though, because there's enough money left on his deal that he probably wouldn't be claimed off of waivers. So uh, there are probably, you know, the, the guys who you would probably zero in on are the ones who are going to be free agents after this year. So is there going to be a market for Napoli? Is there going to be a market for Alejandro de Aza? Uh, is there going to be a market for Justin Masterson? Um, in the case of Napoli and Masterson especially, I think that the possibility would still exist of, uh, of that they could be moved in August. Our Scion poll tonight has to do with the uh, question of whether fans think that uh, the trade deadline should be moved from uh, July 31st to later. Now you get these two wild card uh, scenarios in there. Some teams aren't sure whether they're buyers or sellers at this point. Your thoughts on where the trade deadline is? It's a it's kind of a, a great question, and you know one that one that Rob Manfred, the commissioner, is also entertaining. Uh, he talked just in the last couple of weeks about the idea that he was open to revisiting the question. And I think you're absolutely right. This, you know, the, the expanded pool of potential playoff participants uh, creates a, a very different dynamic around July 31st. A heck of a lot of uncertainty about uh, about whether or not you're the number of teams we're seeing flipping from the buy column to the sell column and vice versa is pretty staggering in a short period of time coming out of the all star break. Uh, I do think that if if teams want to be able to make the smartest investments that they would definitely want to push it back. Uh, however, if you want to maximize the amount of excitement that exists in the trade deadline, keep it right now and let all of the confusion reign and, you know, and, uh, and have the exciting questions years from now about, can you believe that the Blue Jays put it all in uh, when they were still, when they were out on the outside looking in in the wild card, and then they had X injury on August 2nd, and, you know, the whole thing ended up being an exercise in, in craziness.
I gotta ask you a personal question. As a as a writer, what is the most exciting time of the year for you? Obviously, you're all pumped up about this trade deadline, you know, and, and then you yes, get the off season stuff. You get the trades in the off season, the winter meetings, spring training, the regular season. I would have to have, hate to go down to the clubhouse after a game and, and talk to a player. <laughs> I, that, that would be. I, I don't. I wouldn't like that part of it. That's a fair, it's, it's a really interesting question. I mean, part of the trade deadline is this, it's a really puzzling and confounding mix of like of excitement with the deals that actually happen versus the frustration of chasing smoke, which is what so much of the trade deadline is. The rumors of, you know, of what might happen that, you know, that might not have any real bearing in reality. So uh, it's a, so the trade deadline is a really confusing time that costs a lot of us a lot of sleep. Um, and uh, I would say that that's kind of the most adrenaline filled part of the year the the post game stuff you know ultimately the reason why the the reason why we fall in love with the game is because we love watching it and so the opportunity to talk about what happens on the field you know when when you get to see when you get to see great baseball you know i i think that that's probably the most exciting thing that any of us want to talk about or write about um but you know but it, it is a pretty it, it is a pretty amazing thing you know there's there's something about that about the bets that teams are placing in rapid succession. It's like watching a trading room floor or something. Is uh, as you get to see the bets on uh, the, the bets going down on uh, at the trade deadline. So uh, we all love baseball, Jerry. To right and Castillo is there. Alex Spear, as always. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Red Sox trailing two to one. White Sox have a 2-1 lead over the Red Sox. We head to the bottom of the third inning. Jackie Bradley Jr. stands in and takes strike one from Chris Sale. First at bat of the night for Bradley, hitting at 121 on the year. And a check swing there, fouling it back down 0-2. More strikeouts through the first two innings for Chris Sale. Top of the Red Sox order, Brock Holt and then Xander Bogarts to follow. We have the Red Sox batting here in the third inning. Swing and a miss, and there is strikeout number five for Sale. Well, it's now time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag DataStrongFan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. Tweet your photos now. Brought to you by T Mobile. One out here in the third inning for Brock Holt. Struck out looking in the first inning. I always feel more educated after talking to uh, Alex Spear. 
Uh, I feel really dumb talking to Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really do, but it's great to have on. I mean, yeah. he's, uh, he's full of energy, full of knowledge, and um, it's a little bit uncomfortable for me. I, I like to pick his brain, though. I really do. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing. There he is. The 0-2 pitch is a swing and a miss on a pitch running in, and that is six strikeouts for sale. Very impressive. Two down. And we talked about the high being 14. Uh, he's on a pretty good the run right now. Fastball inside. He got Holt last time on a breaking ball that was inside. Inside corner. This time he goes inside with the uh, fastball. A two-seam fastball that time to pick up the strikeout. Two down here in the third inning as Xander Bogarts single stole a base in the first and has scored the Red Sox only run on the night. I'll tell you what I feel like when Alex is in here. I feel like I'm in class <laughs> and I'm like hiding behind the desk. You know, I really don't want to ask a question <laughs> Pretty because I'm afraid it's going to be a really stupid question, you know. <laughs> and sure. it's like, you know, when you didn't want the teacher to call on you, right? How you kind of hide. <laughs> it brings back bad memories for you, I it, think. It does. I, it really I'm does. To see. Yeah. 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 The 0-2 pitch to Xander Bogarts is a liner just over the outstretched glove of Abreu. Heading towards second, Bogarts throw is going to be in time. J.B. Shuck showing off a great arm from right field. And for the second time tonight, Red Sox have had a base runner thrown out trying to get a double. 2-1 White Sox. things happen watch out good things are happening to local people at easternbank.com slash good things happen let's we'll see if good things are going to happen here for the Red Sox John Farrell has challenged that last play last inning and the play at second base and Bill Miller the crew chief along with the second base umpire Doug Eddings talking with New York right now and get another look as we look again, we see the glove come down around the elbow, it looks like, and was the hand on the bag? That's the question, and I think that's what they're looking at right now in New York. No doubt the throw beat him. Was the tag there is the question. Those used to be automatic outs, yep. you know, and, and a replay changed all that. If the throw beat you, generally you were out, no matter how good a slide you made.
So Alexander waiting to find out his fate. It is taking a long time. Play on the the ruling on the field was out, and John Farrell trying to have this overturn. Red Sox challenging here. And they have been looking at this uh, the entire time you're way uh, on the break and since you've returned. So it's been a while. And they're sticking without. So the Red Sox lose their challenge. So thrown out from nine to six at second base. Is Xander Bogarts and Brad Pearson, the trainer, checking on him. You know, the Red Sox have a history of supporting our men and women in uniform, and many of you may know Ernie Bach Jr. Ernie and his organization, Music Drives Us, are committed to supporting and preserving music programs that have positive impact on our community. Garen Austin caught up with Ernie earlier today. Ernie, you have an event coming up, Boots and Strings. Tell us about the event, what it benefits, and how can our viewers get more information? It's the second annual Boots and Strings Music Drives Us at musicdrivesus.org. And Heroes Helpers of America are doing a, an event at Lake Pearl Pavilion in Rentham, August 30th from 12 to 4. Family friendly. It's going to have music all day. 20 restaurants are participating. It's really great. And all the money goes to help the soldiers and the veterans with PTSD. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a great it's event. It's going we to be great. We wish you a lot of success this year. Yeah, go to musicdrivesus.org for tickets. All right, Garen, thank you very much. As back on the mound is Stephen Wright here for the fourth inning as the White Sox have a 2 1 lead over the Red Sox through the first three. And he'll be dealing with Adam LaRoche, Alexei Ramirez, and JB Shuck here in the fourth inning. Now the Red Sox already have had two runners thrown out with two outs at second base in this ball game. Swihart was way out at second base. And Bogach much closer. This is one I think if Swiha had to do again would have obviously held at first base because Melky Cabrera had him by a long margin. Bogarts on the other hand with two outs not a bad idea. Took a good throw to get him. And I, I like that chance better than I like the first one. Jerry did you know and this kind of surprised me a little bit uh, with that challenge the Red Sox tie the Rays for the most challenges in the majors really 36. Challenges by the Red Sox this year. We are efforting to find out how many have been successful challenges, but uh, 36 so far. Adam LaRoche down 0 2, grounds it foul towards the photographer as well. It really has taken the argument out of the game, hasn't it? Yep. I just don't see managers and umpires going after each other like they used to. And I'm not sure that's a you know the bad thing. I, some of those were ridiculous. So 14 have been overturned of the 36 challenges. Outside for a ball one and two. Roche flying out to the warning track in right field back in the first inning. Rusnay Castillo making the catch. Last inning, Wright got two quick outs on strikeouts of Sanchez and Eaton and gave up a single and a walk, but got out of it. And Abreu flied out to right field. White Sox stranding a pair. Two two. And LaRoche lifting it in the air to right center field. Jackie Bradley Jr. makes the catch for the first out of the fourth inning. Well, join the Red Sox for Youth Sports Week, August 18th through the 20th at Fenway Park. Visit RedSox.com slash Youth Sports to learn how your team can receive some great giveaway items. A lot of kids on hand as the Red Sox and White Sox in the end of this four-game series. Ramirez shortens up shows bunt and takes a strike. He struck out looking in the second inning one of the five strikeouts for Stephen Wright in the game tonight. 
The other starter, Chris Sale, has six strikeouts through the first three innings. Fly ball, center field. Again, Jackie Bradley Jr. Two outs in the inning. Ace Ticket has great deals on the best seats to all Red Sox games, as well as your tickets to Zach Brown and James Taylor at Fenway. Ace also has the best deals on tickets to all New England Patriots games. Visit aceticket.com. Ace Ticket is more than a ticket. Two outs in the fourth for J.B. Shuck. Flight out to Hanley Ramirez in left field in the second inning. 0 for 1. Two runs, three hits, no errors for Chicago. A run, four hits, no errors for the Red Sox. Shaku made the throw from right field that threw out to Xander Bogarts to end last inning. Started the first game of the series in center field. That's it with Adam Eaton out there every night. He's in right tonight. And he fouls it back to even the count of two and two. DraftKings.com is paying out over $300 million this baseball season. DraftKings has given out $34 million to Boston residents alone since the site launched. Get your free entry into a one-day fantasy baseball contest today using the promo code NESSON. All three full count. On the ground up the middle into center field and a two out base hit for J.B. Shuck. There's the fourth hit of the night for the White Sox. That looked like Wright had a chance to have his second one, two, three inning of the ball game, but uh, not so quickly as Shuck takes one up the middle for the base hit and he becomes a threat to run at first base with four steals on the season. A two out base runner here for Chicago and Tyler Flower is the batter. That's a fly ball out to center field and Jackie Bradley Jr. has a chance to make all three put outs in the inning and does. Through three and a half it's two to one White Sox.
Life Simpler means finding new technology that puts your needs first. See what's new at easternbank.com. Here, your first Eastern Bank. Well, Stephen Wright up to 73 pitches through the first four innings. Gave up two runs in the first. Three shutouts since. Carl Willis checking in on him in between innings. And there is Hanley Ramirez to lead it off in the Boston fourth inning. Ramirez, Ortiz, and Napoli. There's a grounder to short, Alexei Ramirez. For the first out here of the fourth inning. Hey, Red Sox Nation, want the inside scoop from Dunkin' Donuts? Follow at Dunkin' Boston on Twitter for tweets about exclusive contests, news, and more happening in and around New England. The Red Sox run on Dunkin'. Here comes the rain. And a 50 minute rain delay to begin tonight's game. And rain falling here at Fenway with one out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Ortiz, a cue shot off the end of the bat and the shift on. Throw to first is going to be late. And David Ortiz aboard with a one out base hit. He's two for two tonight against Chris Sale now. He couldn't have rolled that out any better than what it, <laughs> he hit it out there. Just spinning down that third base line. And Saladino has a long way to go to try to make this play. Still makes the attempt at first base, but uh, Ortiz by the bag. Hands go up as he crosses the finish line. And coming down pretty hard right now as David at first base with one out. Mike Napoli standing in. Napoli struck out swinging in the first inning. Oh boy. Well, for the White Sox, you got to Chris Sale out there, your ace right now, and you not want to see him have to go into a rain delay. There's a pitch in there for a strike, and it's one and one. This is some rain. Yes, and it's getting very heavy. Sheets of it. A little bit low, and it's three and one. Ball four, and he ends up walking Napoli. So that's just the first walk of the night given up by Sale. Red Sox have two on with one out now. And Rusne Castillo coming up. Rusnay grounding out to third base in the second inning. 0 for 1. Hopefully this is passing. Well, we all hope it's passing. Yeah, yeah. It will eventually pass, Don. It's just a matter of when it passes, when? like tomorrow yeah. or... No, I think it's going to be tonight. <laughs> At some point. Trying to play through here. Rusnay Castillo fouls it off himself. Rusnay grounded out to Tyler Saladino, third base in the second inning, 0 for 1. Ortiz at second, Napoli at first, and a ground ball towards third. Saladino goes to second for one, on to first. It will not be in time. A bid there by the White Sox. They tried to go around the horn, but too much speed. Rusnay down the line. And Napoli did a real good job taking out Sanchez at second base, too. Very difficult double play to turn. You see the third baseman backing up and watch Napoli. He's right on top of the second baseman, upends him, and that causes that takes a little bit off that throw to first base. Boy, did he ever? That's a good, good, hard, clean takeout by Napoli at second base. Two down, first and third, and Pablo Sandoval the batter. Right said 95 mile an hour fastball biting in fouls it off. Pablo struck out swinging in the second inning one of six strikeouts for Chris Sale on the night. 
David Ortiz at third. Ruznay Castillo at first with two outs here in the fourth. Soft toss to first and Castillo back to the bag. Tying run 90 feet away here for the Red Sox in the fourth inning. Swing and a miss, and it's 0-2. 96 that time. Heavy rain falling at Fenway as the Red Sox bat here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Sandoval gets hit on the swing and he is out. So he got hit with the pitch, but he was swinging at it and got him on the back of the hand or wrist. Tough to tell, but he strikes out and Sandoval in some pain. So that will end the inning as that is the seventh strikeout for sale. It is two to one. White Sox have the lead at the end of four. Has taken over at third base for Pablo Sandoval. As Carlos Sanchez leads it off for Chicago, takes strike one. Uh, one more look at that uh, contact uh, on the wrist area for Sandoval, the left wrist. And you can see clearly he does swing at it, so he's out near the strikeout. Sandoval immediately going uh, down that runway and up to the clubhouse. I'm gonna get some x rays. No two to Sanchez in the dirt. And last night, Josh Rutledge took over at third base. Pablo leaving with dehydration, and tonight, hit on the wrist. Grounder left side. Rutledge going to cut it off on the run. He's throwing plenty of time. 
MLB.TV Premium is the number one live streaming sports service. Watch every out-of-market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Visit MLB.TV for details. David Miller, groundskeeper, came out and spoke to Bill Miller, the home plate umpire and crew chief in between innings. Rain has let up from the clip it was currently dropping at earlier. 1 0. Ready to go with some drying agent out there in Canvas Alley. Eighty pitches as Wright falls behind three and zero. Oh. Eaton one for two tonight. Singled, scored in the first inning. Struck out swinging in the third. Tonight's cold hard facts are brought to you by Clean Chris Pours Light. Last time the White Sox went unbeaten on a road trip of at least eight games. Came on an eleven game trek in 1951. Currently seven and zero oh on this trip. Started in Detroit as this is ball four down to first base. Goes Adam Eaton. One out walk, always a threat to steal. That's the second walk given up by Wright. Here is Tyler Saladino, who is one for two in the ball game, struck out in the first, single to center in the third. Stolen bases in Eaton's career. Held on over there by Mike Napoli. Wright gave up two runs in the first, but has not been touched for runs since. Runner goes. Saladino takes the strike. Little bobble by Swihart. No throw. So Eaton steals second base with one out. That time uh, Swihart having difficulty getting the ball out of the oversized catches mitt. That's certainly an adjustment for those guys. They reach into that bigger glove and all of a sudden you know it's tough to handle the baseball and never really did have control of it so couldn't make a throw to second base. It is amazing how big that glove is. It's like trying to catch a ball with a pillow. A little bit of the shape of a first baseman's mitt. Fouls it off two and two. See how big that uh, catch's mitt is when it's wide open. It's funny how that knuckleball doesn't seem to find it quite often. No. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Strikes out Saladino. Needed that. And that is the sixth strikeout for right. Two down. Six strikeouts tonight. Ties a career high for Stephen Wright. And it brings up Melky Cabrera. With Adam Eaton at second base, two away. Kevin Lomanowicz says uh, we're going to have another heavy shower come through. So I just thought I'd let you know, Don, so it's, you're not caught by surprise when it comes. Did, did he have time details again? Last time he said 15 minutes. What's he got this time? I didn't tell you. Uh, no. Yeah. Let me check. Another quick heavy shower coming. Doesn't say what time, but it uh, looks like uh, Ooh, kind of that's not good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fouled off to the left out of play. Here it comes now. It's time to come now. It is in Brookline right now. Man. Be here in a few minutes. 
We're right on top of this stuff, I tell you. Herrera fouls it off. Hangs tough here at 0 and 2. And hits in his last 14 at bats with runners in scoring position. Swing and a miss, and Cabrera strikes out to end the inning. Seven strikeouts for Stephen Wright. Let's take a look at the Red Sox box score. into the bottom of the fifth inning we go and Blake Swihart leading it off here for Boston. Swihart single tried to stretch it into a double and was gunned down by the left fielder Melky Cabrera in the second inning. The Sox have had that happen twice tonight. Xander Bogarts was thrown out in the third inning trying to extend a single into a double. Swihart, Bradley, and Holt to bat here in the fifth. Rain falling again. Sale at 56 pitches working here in the fifth inning. As seven strikeouts for the first four innings. Two balls, two strikes. Pretty consistent, too, with that fastball at about 95 miles an hour. Got to cover up that expensive equipment. Anybody running that camera? Yes. Foul tip not held on to by Flowers. This would be the shower. Yeah, it's, it's here, but it's here, Don. We're officially in the middle of it. Fly ball center field Eaton will look up into the raindrops to make the catch for the first out. Your next fill up could be free with Gulf Oil's new rewards program power points visit GulfPowerPoints.com to sign up and start earning free gas. It's that easy. One out here in the fifth inning for Jackie Bradley who struck out swinging in the third. Bradley gets hit. 
They'll go down to first base. Going to spin out of the way of that and gets hit with the pitch with one out. Trying to get that fastball inside on Jackie Bradley and just gets a piece of him. Bradley able to spin out of the way of that and take it right off the hip. We saw Sandoval last inning get one off the wrist and now Bradley off the hip. One out one on and Brock Holt top of the order coming up. His third look at Chris Sale. As he takes ball one he struck out against Sale looking in the first. Went swinging in the third. Two of the seven strikeouts for Sale in the game. Slings it over to first base and back to the bag is Bradley. Started outside now comes inside on Holt missed both times two and zero. Oh. On the ground to first base Abreu you will go to second they get the lead runner in Bradley for the second out of the inning as Holt reaches at first base. Wasn't sure for a while whether Abreu was going to go in that direction and go to first base with it, but uh, you see, it was way in the webbing of the glove, but still able to clear it out of there and make a good, accurate throw to Alex Ramirez, the shortstop. Two down runner at first, and Xander Bogart's coming up. He is two for two tonight. And a base hit to left field in the first inning, and a base hit to right in the third, but was thrown out trying to turn it into a double in the third inning. Here he is in the fifth with the runner at first and two down. Just missed. Bogarts down the right field line falling fair heading for third is Holt he'll be stopped there as the throw comes back in third hit of the night for Xander Bogarts first and third for the Red Sox with two down that seems like every time uh, Bogarts goes in that direction he picks up a base hit I mean that ball toward the uh, outside corner right toward the end of the bat for Xander but he's able to drop it in and by the time Shuck runs it down, you can see that the Holt going to third base. So a nice three for three night going for Bogarts out of that two spot in the batting order. Two down, first and third, and Hanley Ramirez coming up 0 for 2 in the game. Hanley is struck out swinging, grounded to short. Again, the Red Sox have the tying run 90 feet away. They left Ortiz there last inning. Holds at third. Bogarts crossed the diamond at first. Ramirez fouls it off and down he goes.
right off the left foot it looked like. As Ramirez swing on top of that pitch and hitting it directly down on his foot fastball inside. Monday, August 17th is Kids Lunchbox Giveaway Night at Fenway Park. All kids in attendance will receive a free lunchbox presented by Come On. Visit RedSox.com slash promos for more info and to purchase your tickets now. First and third, two down, Hanley Ramirez with a count of one and one. Down by the tarp and towards the end of the bat. Sounds like he broke the bat and he'll get a new one. Fastball tailing up and away from Ramirez and right toward the end of the bat. And that will crack it. Tying run at third base and Brock Holt with Xander Bogarts at first base. Here's a one two pitch. On the ground foul and again. Hobbling around. I think his foot again. That time it was a breaking ball it looked like a little bit higher maybe off the shin. So he's had one off the foot and the shin in this at bat. Word on Pablo Sandoval left forearm contusion, so no fracture. One two pitch. Ramirez a fair ball down the first baseline kicks into right scoring from third is Holt heading to third is Bogarts and this game is tied two to two Hanley Ramirez driving it in. Now a couple of Red Sox using the opposite field first Bogarts in this inning and now Ramirez with a bullet down that first baseline. Abreu was fairly close to the line they wanted to go up and in instead they go up and away. And Ramirez takes it right between Abreu and the first base bag. Holt scores, Bogart on a third base. And hobbling the first base is Hanley Ramirez. First and third, two outs. Red Sox can take a lead here with a base hit from David Ortiz. He will take strike one right at the bottom of the zone. David two for two tonight double in the first inning a single in the fourth inning and he drove in a run. Ball to strike to big poppy. But low for ball two. Red Sox have tied it up now, looking for the lead. Sale with his 75th pitch of the night. And Ortiz sends it to right center field. That's going to get in for a hit. From third comes Bogarts, and the Red Sox take a 3 2 lead on the third hit of the night for David Ortiz. Uh, David came into the game only two for ten 
against Chris Sale, but three for three in the game tonight. He and Bogarts both having three hit nights. A fastball inside and Ortiz to center field for the base hit and the RBI. Number 57 on the season for Ortiz. That may actually make that 58 with two tonight. Don Cooper, the pitching coach, out there to talk to Sale. That is three straight hits off Chris Sale here in the fifth. Two runs in the inning, and the Red Sox have taken the lead. Now well, Napoli coming up. Napoli has struck out and walked tonight his third plate appearance against Sale. That's with Hanley Ramirez at second, David Ortiz at first. And he takes strike one. Chris Sale's pitching line brought to you by your Eastern Lexus dealers. Four and two thirds, eight hits, three runs, a walk, seven strikeouts. It's 77 coming up. And it's high to Napoli. Now Stephen Wright's also been able to keep the Red Sox in this game early. Gave up two in the first, but it shut them down since. And give the Red Sox offense a little chance in life. Here's the 25th pitch of this inning for Sale. And a foul off to the right. Good swing by Napoli that time. He's fouling it off. Popped up right side. Sanchez into short right field. Will make the catch that ends the inning, but the Red Sox score twice and take a 3 2 lead at the end of five. You buy Southern New Hampshire University. See yourself succeed at snhu.edu. The Scion TC. And by Digital Federal Credit Union. See what DCU can save you. 3 2 Red Sox now have the lead for Stephen Wright on the mound for the top of the sixth inning. Isaiah Brayu leading it off. Brayu with a two run home run in the first inning to right center field into the bullpen. 
And he flied out to right in the third. High fly ball to left field. Hanley Ramirez looking up into the raindrops. Makes the catch for the first out of the inning. Nesson is proud to support the National Suit Drive in July. When you make a donation of gently used professional clothing at any men's warehouse location, you help unemployed men and women look their best as they re enter the workforce. Learn more at nationalsuitdrive.com. Another shower coming in, Don, and I'm informed that this one's going to last exactly three minutes. You're kidding. Really? Yeah. Three minutes. Three minutes. So has the clock started? One out as Adam LaRoche, the batter, saw the shift as the pitch misses high. The accuracy in which uh, you're coming through with these reports is unbelievable. I mean, well, thank get you. down to the minute. Thank you. Started off as a weatherman in Boise, Idaho. <laughs> Two up pitches in there for a strike, and it's two and one. Then this little gig came up uh, yeah. with professional baseball. So. Baseball thing. Soon people will not be tuning into Nesson for just sports, but also for their weather. The very latest the way things are going so far tonight. This is a pop up right side. Bogarts in the shift is in short right field, and he makes the catch for the second out of the inning. This summer, pump up the fun with Irving Oil. You could win a Ford Escape, a Can Am Spider, five thousand in cash, or other great instant prizes. Visit a participating Irving Oil and IrvingFun.com for details. Two outs in the inning for Alexei Ramirez. He has struck out looking and flied out to center. On the ground and by the dive of Rutledge into left field. Alexei Ramirez with a two out base hit. First time he's been on base tonight. Yeah, Ramirez had a home run in the ball game last night here at Fenway Park. Picks up his first hit, a one for three night tonight. And he has speed at first base, 13 steals on the season. So there's a good chance that he may go with two outs in the inning to try to get in scoring position. So two down Ramirez at first base. And here is JB Shuck. Up over a hundo now is Stephen Wright. One oh one tonight, up over his average. And his season high, ninety-eight. Throw to first. And that has Ramirez darting back. Strike called one and one action in the Red Sox pen Robbie Ross up in the pen. Fouls it off one and two. Stephen Wright's pitching line brought to you by Ace Ticket. Five and two thirds, five hits, two runs. The two run home run by Jose Abreu in the first inning. He's walked two, struck out seven. Season high and strikeouts for Wright. Fouls it off to the left out of play. Stephen Wright's and I just won ground ball out on the night. That coming in the fifth inning. With Sanchez at the plate, everything else has either been a strikeout or something hit in the air. Chopped to second and Brock Holt on the high hop. Throws out Chuck and ends the inning. 
Five and a half in the books. 3-2 Red Sox. Fan photo of the game. Fan with a sign that says, Hey, Donna Jerry, today's my 17th birthday. All I want is a Fenway Frank. Hope he got a Fenway Frank. Hope so. Should get it on his birthday. 3 2. Red Sox have the lead over the White Sox, and Rusne Castillo leading it off here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Castillo 0 for 2. He's grounded out to third. Reach on a fielder's choice. Red Sox getting to sail for two runs in the fifth. Number down the third baseline. Sale will not have a play. Rusne is on to begin things here in the sixth inning. Base hit for Rusne Castillo. Got a little nub down that third baseline, and they, as you can see Sale right there just to try to pick it up, trying to be too quick, could not pick it up. And I think even if he does, Rusne beats that out at first base. Grass a little bit wet, ball slippery. Castillo getting down a line. So Rusne at first to begin things here in the sixth inning brings up Josh Rudledge. His first at bat of the night took over for Sandoval. He was hit in the wrist, left forearm contusion is what they have called it, and he left the ball game. Good news is no fracture. So Rutledge second straight night that he's taken over for Sandoval at third base of course coming over from the Angels in the Shane Victorino deal earlier this week. And now he gets hit. First two have reached for the Red Sox here in the sixth inning. Trying to come inside again this time to the right hander. And gets Rutledge right off the arm. Let's see how the Red Sox play this now. First and second, nobody out, getting deeper in the ball game, working toward the bottom of the lineup with Swihart and Bradley. Coming into tonight, Sale had only hit four batters in 132 and two thirds innings. Tonight he has hit Sandoval. He's now hit Rutledge.
Also hit Jackie Bradley Jr. That's three tonight. Two on, nobody out, and Blake Swihart, the batter. They're in at the corners. Swihart takes strike one. Castillo at second, Rutledge at first, with nobody out in the Boston sixth inning. I think one of the reasons they did not have Swihart bunting there is you, you got a couple of lefties due up next, Bradley and Holt. So you may want the right hander swinging the bat off for sale. Action for Chicago. Matt Albert is up in the pen, former Red Sox right hander. One one pitch outside, and it's two and one. Swihart lines it off the glove of Ramirez. It ends up in short left. Castillo will stop at third, and the bases are loaded with nobody out. Ramirez almost made that catch. And a base hit for Swihart. A very nice effort by Alexi Ramirez to shortstop. It looked like for a second he was going to make that catch, and it just deflects off the glove. And Castillo can only go as far as third base. If he makes that catch, he's got a double play at second. Going as high as he possibly could, but not able to corral it. And the Red Sox have the bases loaded with nobody out. Don Cooper back out there to talk to Chris Sale. He's been out there a couple times tonight. Oh, back in the fifth inning, uh, a painful at bat for Hanley Ramirez. Hit twice. And then gets that high fastball and takes it to the opposite field to drive in a run. And then that was followed by David Ortiz with a line drive in the center field to bring home the second run in the inning. That's how the Red Sox have wrapped the 3 2 lead in this ball game. You got a chance now to do some more damage. Jackie Bradley batting out of the nine spot and fouling it off to the left out of play. Struck out in the third, hit by a pitch in the fifth. To center, Eaton coming in, but it'll be a base hit. Castillo scores, and the Red Sox will take a 4 2 lead. RBI single for Jackie Bradley has the Red Sox with a two run advantage. A great at bat for Jackie Bradley. You know, last time he got hit by a pitch, but he hangs in there on the breaking ball very, very well. Head on the ball and puts the line drive in the center field for the base hit. See Castillo going back to tag up, but the ball was not caught. He can come in. Bases remain loaded. Four to two ball game. Nice at bat by Bradley Jr. Now Brock hold infield in all the way around as Brock will take strike one. Eleven hits allowed. Ties a season high for sale. Ball and a strike to Holt. Brock struck out looking in the first, swinging in the third. Reached on a fielder's choice and scored in the fifth inning. Strike two.
Two for seven this year. The base is loaded for Brock. That's with Rutledge at third, Swihart at second, Bradley at first. Line in the right field, a base hit for Holt. In comes Rutledge. Here comes Swihart behind him. Two runs in, and the Red Sox take a 6 2 lead. Brock Holt driving in a pair. Well, we've seen two very good at bats from left handed pitching to left handed hitting by the hitters. Both Bradley and Holt hanging in on the breaking ball of Sale and picking up the base hits. Bradley to center field. This time Holt getting the breaking ball and pulling it to right field to drive in two runs. Two great at bats. New career high and hits allowed for Chris Sale, giving up 12 hits in this outing. As he departs, the Red Sox have a 6 2 lead. The pitching change from Fenway. from this game after five plus gives up 12 hits still responsible for the men on first and third nobody out and Xander Bogart's the batter Xander was three for three tonight against sale to right field JB Shuck going back he will make the catch tagging at third base is Bradley he'll score without a problem and the Red Sox will up their lead to seven to two Sack fly for Bogarts. Once again, Bogarts using the opposite field. This time to get a, a sacrifice fly. Still remains three for three on the night. Picks up his first RBI of the night. Gives him 48 now on the season and increases the Red Sox lead to five. Jackie Bradley Jr. No problem scoring on that. Now Hanley Ramirez the seventh member of the Red Sox to bat here in the sixth inning they have scored so far four times in the inning. This call to the bullpen brought to you by Kia as into the game is Matt Albers. Former Red Sox right hander to his eighth game with the White Sox one to know the 0 0.82 earned run average when it's hitting at 179 against the right hander. Second time this series we have seen Albers. He got the win on Monday night. Broke his right pinky finger 
in an off field altercation on April the 23rd against Kansas City. And a bet on the DL. Here in eight rehab games with Triple A Charlotte. Look at his arsenal. 71% fastballs for Matt Albers. Red Sox infield with one out at double play depth with Holt at first. Towards third base, Saladino will go to first and gets Hanley Ramirez taking second as Holt with now two down in the inning. Not hit all that hard. No yeah. chance to turn two. And we'll see if they pitch towards he's here with first base open. Napoli on deck. David a three hit night. And sure thinking about it and he will put him on. They will take their chances with Mike Napoli. Ninth intentional walk of the year for David Ortiz. Oh, almost came back towards the strike zone and the plate. Sell still responsible for Holt at second base. And the intentional walk complete now. David Ortiz down to first base. Well, don't miss WB Mason Extra Innings Live right after the game. TC and Tim Wakefield to break down tonight's game. You'll hear from Stephen Wright, whatever, whenever, wherever. Who but WB Mason? Ninth batter of the inning for the Red Sox is Mike Napoli. He has struck out tonight, swinging, walked, and fly to right. In there for strike one to Napoli, bottom of the zone. Strike two, and it's 0 2. A sinking fastball that time by Albers at 88 miles an hour. Inside part of the plate. Actually, that's a pitch that Napoli likes to swing at. Strike three call. Napoli knew it and takes with him the first strikeout for Albers, but a four run inning as the Red Sox on top 7 2.
Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. On to the seventh inning. Red Sox have a 7-2 lead. Stephen Wright and his 105 pitches back on the mound again. First pitch strike into Tyler Flowers. And like last inning, action behind him in the pen. Robbie Ross still up in the pen as Wright starts the inning. Flowers with a swing and a miss. Down 0-2. Fastball followed by the knuckleball from Wright. Mixed in a few fastballs on this one tonight. He has not given up runs since the first inning. Grounded back at him. Nicely picked. First out of the seventh. Now I mentioned it a lot that a lot of times knuckleball is a good fielding pitches because the pitch is slow to home plate. So it gives them time to get in a pretty good fielding position. And right there, you can see clearly that Wright was in a good fielding position to play that one hopper. One out here in the seventh, and it brings up Carlos Sanchez. In there for a strike one and one Sanchez has struck out swinging grounded out to third base. On the ground outside a third this time and a foul ball. Shop at Jordan's furniture now and you receive a credit that's equal to twice the amount of the mass sales tax save 12.5 percent on your purchase now through August 14th visit Jordan's dot com for details. Swing and a miss and Wright picks up his eighth strikeout to add to his season high two down. Right at the top of the strike zone here for Stephen Wright. You'll see pitch them before the uh, knuckleball at 76 miles an hour. One of the harder knuckleballs that he'll throw. And underneath it is Sanchez. Make insurance, great service, great coverage, and a great price for auto, home, or life insurance. Strike one to Adam Eaton. It's been on twice tonight, a single and a walk wrapped around a strikeout swinging. One pitch is softly lined into right field for a hit up over Brock Holden into short right field a two out base hit for Adam Eaton third time he's been on second hit they extended his hitting streak to eight games back in the first inning with a base hit since that time a strikeout a walk a stolen base and now another hit here in the seventh. Robbie Ross has now been joined by Tozawa, who is just up. Tyler Saladino, the batter with two down and a runner at first. And a ground ball to shortstop Xander Bogart. So we go the easy way to second for the four south that ends the top of the seventh. Seventh inning stretch, 7 2 Boston. Let's take a look at the updated Red Sox box score.
box, whether you're taking your truck off or owe the kids to practice or your sports car to its limits, there's a Toyo tire for you. Visit toyotires.com. Find a dealer near you. There's a drive to center field. Deep, far, and gone. A home run. Rusne Castillo puts the Red Sox on top, 8-2. to two. Second home run of the year for Castillo. Now that's nice to see right there. Rusne Castillo showing some pop towards center field. Straight away, center field. Gets that uh, fastball, supposed to be a sinker, but it stays up in the zone, and Castillo jumps all over it. Ball hit off the back wall. Looked like it did. For every home run the Red Sox hit the rest of the season, Alltown will donate $500 to Boston Children's Hospital. Alltown is New England's premier healthier convenience retailer. Fly ball into right center field. Adam Eaton makes the catch for the first out of the bottom of the seventh inning. Josh Rutledge retired, and that'll bring up Blake Swihart. I'm going to chance to see a lot more of Rusne Castillo moving forward here over the next two months. See what he can do. He'll have a chance to play on a regular basis. Blake Swihart batting. Two hits tonight, two for three in the ball game. Red Sox now with 13 hits in the game. 12 to Chris Sale, which is remarkable tonight. A career high given up by Sale. Seen a lot of this guy in the series. Dan Jennings has been up a lot and he is warming in the pen right now. Albers starting this inning. Second inning of relief for Albers. The starter on the hook tonight. Chris Sale came in at nine and five. Gave up seven runs in five plus as striking out is Swihart. Two down. Second strikeout for Albers since coming in. That's just seen fastball by Albers uh, picking up the inside corner. Swihart didn't like the call. Albers did. Two outs in the seventh for Jackie Bradley Jr. He has struck out, been hit by a pitch, and had an RBI single in this game. Fly ball to left field. Melky Cabrera in front of the warning track. Makes the catch. It ends the inning. Lead off home run by Rusne Castillo. Red Sox lead it eight to two.
Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Your local Subaru dealers. And by the Kia Sorento. Tonight's game summary is brought to you by Xfinity. Chris Sale right now on the losing side of things. Went five plus, gave up a career high 12 hits, seven runs in the game. Abreu with an early home run off right. And right was very good tonight. Seven innings, giving him those two runs in the first. Right leaving tonight, and Ross coming in here for Boston. And there for a strike to Melky Cabrera, leading it off. Numbers for Robbie Ross. His 28th appearance, 0 1 with a 3.72 earned run average. 29 strikeouts. Opponent sitting at 268 against the left hander. Cabrera grounding it foul outside of third. So for right, seven innings, six hits, two runs. He walked two and a career high eight strikeouts in the game tonight for Stephen Wright. Swing and a miss, and Cabrera strikes out. Ross gets him to begin the eighth. For every Red Sox hit in July, Echo Store Technologies donated $50 to the Massachusetts Down Syndrome Congress. Echo Store is proud to assist MDSC in helping ensure individuals with Down Syndrome feel valued. With this, Echo Store has decided to go above and beyond and donate $12,500. Stay tuned during tomorrow's game to see the final donation and check presentation to four different charities. To learn more, visit echostore.com. Echo Store Technologies, your data center solutions provider. One out in the eighth, and Jose Abreu. Only blemish for Stephen Wright tonight is two run home run back in the first inning. Since then, he's fly to right, fly to left. Down and in, and he might have gotten hit, but apparently not. One and two. He runs 13 hits, no errors for Boston. Two runs, six hits, no errors for the White Sox. Sprayed foul off to the right. Ross took the loss in game one of the series on Monday night when two innings giving up five hits and three runs. He worked the sixth and seventh innings against the White Sox on Monday. Swing and a miss. He strikes out the first two White Sox he faces here in the eighth. Good breaking ball by Ross. That's a, that's a couple of them now in this inning getting Cabrera on that pitch and now getting Abreu on the breaking ball to slide it down and in. Two down for Adam LaRoche, who is 0 for 3. Fly to right, fly to center, popped out to the shortstop. Red Sox in the shift against him defensively. In there for strike one, starts him with a curveball. Popped up, shallow center field. Bradley makes the catch. It ends the top of the eighth. A one, two, three inning for Ross and eight, two Red Sox lead.
industrial plants throughout the Northeast run at optimum efficiency. Did you know FW Web did that? Learn more about this proud Boston Red Sox sponsor at FWWeb.com. Eight to two. Red Sox have the lead over the White Sox. Boston coming to bat here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And a new pitcher for the White Sox there. Third of the night. Dan Jennings comes into the game now for Chicago. 28th appearance. One and three. The 6.16 earned run average. 25 Ks to 15 walks. Giving up more than a hit an inning is 263 upon a batting average against Jennings. And Albers ended up going two innings. Gave up one hit. It was the solo home run by Ruznay Castillo. Blast to straightaway center field. Walked to batter intentionally and struck out two. H.B. Hood salutes the Red Sox Foundation. Ice cream, you scream. We all scream for Fenway's favorite ice cream from Hood, the official dairy of the Boston Red Sox. Bring your favorites home today. One pitch in the air, down the left field line, foul. Now well, we got lucky tonight. We played through the raindrops, didn't have to stop once the game started. A 50 minute rain delay to start this ball game tonight. I'm not sure it rained as hard as it did during the game, before the game. No, it didn't. Rained hotter during the game. <laughs> Twice. Once for three minutes. This <laughs> warming in the pen. And a single his last time up to drive in two. Bouncing in two and two. Xander Bogarts waiting on deck. And we'll see Hanley Ramirez as part of this bottom of the eighth inning. For ball three, full count. Jennings with a 1.17 earned run average. His last five outings since being reinstated from the DL. He's given a one earned run in his last seven and two thirds innings. Payoff pitch to Holt. And a grounder softly. Jennings will throw to first. Who's going to flip, but then realize he had to get it there quicker and threw overhand to get Holt. Stay tuned following WB Mason Extra Innings Live for Red Sox Final. TC and Tim Wakefield will have the latest on the trade news and rumors from around Major League Baseball. That's tonight on Red Sox Final presented by Uno's. I tell you, I'm glad I wasn't a Brayu on that last play because I wasn't <laughs> sure whether he was going underhand, overhand, whatever he was going to do. And he decided to go overhand to a Brayu and still made the play. From there, I think he's going underhand. Then up, up over the top. They get Brock Holt at first base anyway, regardless. One down for Xander Bogarts. It's a three hit night and a sack fly. For ball two, two and zero. Oh. Sale so started this game five plus innings, twelve hits, seven runs. He walked about or struck out seven. So I'm at Alberts for two innings, giving up a run, a home run by Rusne Castillo that started the seventh. Now Dan Jennings. There's a strike, two and one.
just joining us tonight Pablo Sandoval hit in the forearm and left the game with a forearm contusion a ball he actually swung at and struck out on also hit him and had to leave the game Josh Rutledge has been in the game since swing and a miss Bogarts kind of confused on that one running down and in The ball had some late action on it right there. It looked like a cut fastball, and Bogats probably thought it was a straight fastball. All of a sudden, that late movement fooled him. Completely fooled him. Grounded back to the mound. Jennings to first for out number two. This on the first two outs here of this eighth inning for Dan Jennings. But tomorrow afternoon, join TC Steve Lyons, Nick Cafardo, and Rob Bradford live on Yaki Way for our MLB trade deadline show. Don't miss reactions as moves are made or not made. Essence trade deadline show begins tomorrow afternoon at three. Two outs in the eighth inning for Hanley Ramirez. Yeah, struck out, grounded out, singled, and grounded out again. A single in the fifth produced a run. 49th RBI of the year. Outfield straight away on Hanley Ramirez. As he takes strike one. Fooled as well, and it's 0 and 2. That's very similar to the pitch that Bogarts yep. uh, took an unbalanced swing at. Let's look different out of the hand. Yeah, a little cut right at the end and down and in. Fouls it off, and that gets a piece of the catcher, Tyler Flowers. Tonight, after Red Sox coverage on Nesson Sports Today, we'll have a complete recap of day one from Patriots training camp. That's tonight on Nesson Sports Today, presented by People's United Bank. See what know-how can do. David Ortiz waiting on deck. There are two outs here in the home half of the eighth. Bouncing in for ball one. Red Sox trying to salvage the final game of this four game series after dropping the first three. Enjoy an 8 2 lead as they bat here in the eighth inning. Tonight, when the White Sox scored more in the first inning again, they took a 2 0 lead. On a two run home run by Jose Abreu. Not scored since. Ramirez strikes out to end the inning, and Hanley breaks his bat in frustration. Red Sox take an 8 2 lead to the ninth inning.
Bob will donate $1,000 to the Jimmy Fund for every game saved this season. Everybody saves at Bob's. Bob's Discount Furniture, quality, choice, and value. Learn more at mybobs.com. Now we head to the ninth inning. Red Sox on top, 8-2 to two over the White Sox. Third pitcher of the night for Boston is Chinichi Tazawa. Tazawa into his 45th game of the year, 1-3 and three with a 2.74 earned run average. 44 strikeouts and 42 and two thirds innings, only seven walks, and opponents hitting at 228 against Tazawa. Through a perfect eighth inning, two strikeouts on Monday in game one of the series against Chicago. Let's say Ramirez leading it off here for Chicago. And a fly ball lined out towards left center field that is quickly going to get to the wall. Ramirez headed for second base and he will stay there with a double to begin things here in the ninth inning. Now Ramirez with a couple of hits in his last two at bats a single and now the double gets the fastball. From Tazawa and takes it finds that gap you can see that uh, Jackie Bradley shading him a little bit toward the opposite field so he runs it out to the 379 and picks up the two base hit. There is J.B. Shuck one for three a single to center field in the fourth inning. So after seven innings of two run ball tonight for Stephen Wright, Robbie Ross pitched the eighth, got two strikeouts. Red Sox pitching as a team tonight with 10 Ks. Eight for Wright, two for Ross. Ball and a strike to Shuck. Zawa has made two scoreless appearances since allowing runs in three out of four games. Fooled him one and two. Curveball that time from Zawa. There's a lot of relief appearances for Zawa. Back since the start of last year, actually 2013, he's made 186 relief appearances since 2013. That's fourth most in the American League. Not quite full yet, Don. I think it's a full moon on Saturday. That's the information that I have. High for ball three, full count. Double by Ramirez to begin the inning. Now JB Shuck. With Tyler Flowers being pinch hit for it appears. Garcia, Larry Garcia has come out on deck for the White Sox. On the ground towards second baseman Brock Holt. Able to keep the foot in the bag is Mike Napoli taking third Ramirez with now one down in the inning. Well, Hull had to really uh, rush that because uh, Shuck gets down that line very, very well. And Holt knew that, had to scoop it, rush that throw to first base to get the out. Tomorrow at 5.30, don't miss Friday Night Fenway presented by Budweiser. TC and Steve Lyons will have a complete deadline day recap. And remember to join Budweiser at Jerry Remy's before every Red Sox home game in August for a chance to be selected as the Budweiser fan of the game. Budweiser brewed the hard way. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Larry Garcia pinch hitting here for Tyler Flowers. He spins out of the way of a fastball up high for ball one. First appearance of the series. 
Spending the bulk of the year with Triple A Charlotte, 75 games, hitting at 296. That's with Alexei Ramirez at third base, one down in the ninth. Same spot, but he chases this time on the high fastball. Now, first two pitches from the Zawa upstairs and out of the strike zone. One taken by Garcia. This time he bites. Strike two, fastball, and much lower this time. One and two. And good velocity, 94 from Tozawa. As many appearances as he's had, he's been able to maintain his velocity on his fastball, and of course, that out pitch for him, the split fingered fastball. Did he go? No, he did not, says Adrian Johnson, third base umpire. Tried to elevate again. And almost, but not quite. I see it jumping back out of the way. Full count now. Carlos Sanchez on deck. One out runner at third base here in the top of the ninth inning. Swing and a miss. Tazawa strikes him out on the fastball at 95 that time. Two down. Yeah, steady diet of fastballs from Tazawa in that at bat. Certainly a plan going in against Garcia that they were going to throw him all hard stuff, and they did, and eventually win the battle with a strikeout. Two down. Alexei Ramirez at third base, and Carlos Sanchez, the batter, 0 for 3. He struck out twice, grounded out. Foul back. Sanchez has a 12 game hitting streak on the line as he bats here with two outs in the ninth. He runs 13 hits, no errors for the Red Sox in this game. Two runs, seven hits, no errors for the White Sox. Two down in the ninth. Fly ball to right field. Ruzne Castillo is under it. Makes the catch and the Red Sox win. They salvage the final game of this four game series. And some offense tonight for the Red Sox and very good pitching tonight for the Red Sox as well from their starter. Step aside and get back with more for Fenway right after this.